So Hangman's fracture is a fracture through the pars interarticularis of C2. It uh, comprises about 25% of all C2 fractures, only behind odontoid fractures in regards to uh, incidence and frequency of C2 fractures. Like odontoid fractures, it's associated with other fractures, uh, most commonly C1, but also other non-contiguous spine fractures are common, occur in about 30% of the patients. Very rare incidence of neurologic deficits because this is a canal expanding fracture, except for a typical hangman's fractures, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Um, it is uh, defined, I'm trying to go backwards. Oh boy. Um, okay, so Effendi uh, described a classification system about 40 years ago. It's basically withstood the test of time. Type one fractures are non-displaced fractures. Type two fractures have displacement greater than three millimeters with some uh, disruption of the C2, C3 disc space. And type three fractures involve a facet dislocation at C2, C3. So again, type one non-displaced, the vast majority are, are these type one fractures, 70%, and they are routinely treated non-operatively with uh, a collar uh, two, to, two to three months. Less commonly, type two fractures, they have variable displacement of the C2, C3 disc space and are displaced more than three millimeters. These are the, the controversial fractures, which we'll spend a good amount of time on uh, discussing them. These are the fun fractures to, to talk about. Type three fractures, extremely rare. They uh, involve a uh, mm -hmm. facet dislocation of C2 on C3 and all require surgical stabilization. Eismont described an atypical uh, hangman's fracture that involves the posterior body of C2 that you see right here. Now, the interesting thing about these atypical hangman fractures is that they are not a canal expanding fractures. Actually, they are associated with a higher incidence of spinal cord injury because they do not expand the spinal canal and also associated with uh, also a higher incidence of vertebral artery uh, injuries because of this fracture pattern. They, there is a type 2A hangman's fracture that has less translational displacement, but significant angular displacement due to the complete disruption of the C2, C3 disc space, and these are notoriously extremely unstable. It is these type 2 fractures that are very controversial, uh, whether operative versus non-operative treatment should, should be done. And early on, uh, because of, uh, well, I'll tell you, Alex Vaccaro's paper almost uh, 20 years ago, show that the results of non-operative treatment of these type two fractures were good. Now he had the caveat that provided adequate reduction in stabilization is utilized. And what this means is a period of traction, um, Gardner Wells or halo traction followed by halo Im immobilization. And even with this halo immobilization, he had a 22% failure rate with these uh, type two uh, hangman's fractures. And this required a Minerva cast or a halo, which we all know, uh, especially in, in these days, extremely debilitating for, for our, our patients and ma many times not accepted by our patients or surgeons. And we all know this significant complication uh, rates with these halos, especially in older patients and significant complications and even death can occur, especially with our older patients. So because of this, first line surgical treatment has been advocated by many uh, authors and many reviews have shown, especially with disruption, the C2, C3 disc space uh, and the significant instability because of this, that operative stabilization should be considered. And there are many uh, 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 studies that have shown that surgical st stabilization in these unstable type 2 hangman's fractures is uh, associated with good outcomes. But in the big picture, you need to understand that the vast majority of hangman fractures are treated non-operatively, but that's because 70% are non-displaced or type one. And you see with this um, uh, healing rate with non-operative treatment, universally type one fractures heal with non-operative treatment, but it's the type two and the type threes that have extreme difficulty he healing with non-operative treatment. And because of that, many authors have recommended um, surgical stabilization for these, for these fractures. Now, the question is how to stabilize this. Uh, and, and this is where some interesting discussion uh, can be made. The options are anterior inner body fusion, ACDF, C2, C3, or transpedicular fixation uh, performed, uh, advocated by Jude, but this leaves the C2, C3 disc space uh, without uh, stability. Also, transpedicular screws, sort of Jude screws across the fracture with 
lateral mass fixation in C3, and then also other longer posterior constructs, including C1 uh, or, or the occiput down, down to C4. Here is an example of an anterior cervical discectomy infusion at C2, C3 for a uh, displaced type uh, 2 Hangman's fracture. Now, the problem with this operation, as we all know, is, is the significant incidence of dysphagia when we expose the upper cervical spine. And this is the most common complication with this uh, operative technique. Also, it can be extremely difficult to place the upper screw. In this case here, this is a case that, that, that I did and I could not get the screws through the uh, upper part of the plate because of the uh, mandible here. And this can be uh, technically challenging. So this required me to then flip the patient over and do a posterior st stabilization as well. But, but again, the most common problem with ACDF at C2, C3 is the incidence of dysphagia that occurs in a fairly high percentage of, of these patients. Now, what about transparticular screws, replacing screws across the fracture side as advocated by Jude? This is an elegant technique. I love this. The problem is it still leaves the C2, C3 disc space open, and there is a potential complication of vertebral artery injury, especially with a high-riding VA groove, which you see uh, here in this incidence. Also, uh, there have been issues with proper placement of, of the C2 screws, and uh, 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 navigation has been advocated by many authors um, to uh, help in, in placement of of these screws. Now, there have been many studies looking at uh, the Jude screw or the fixation of the screw. And again, with good uh, results, but again, in this uh, instance, uh, uh, one case of severe blood loss from a vertebral artery injury. There have been uh, uh, a few biomechanical studies looking at these various surgical techniques. And um, again, the pedicle screws or the Jude screws alone have been found to be insufficient, mainly because it does not uh, address the C2, C3 disc uh, space and the instability across C2, C3. Posterior fusion uh, with uh, pedicle screws at C2 and lateral mass screws at C3 are much more stable than the anterior construct at C2, C, C3. Um, and uh, this technique has been uh, shown to be highly su successful uh, in, in many, many studies. So the question is, in unstable, displaced hangman's fractures, how should they be treated? I would advocate surgical uh, uh, operative intervention uh, rather than halos. And whether you use an anterior ACDF at uh, C2, C3, uh, which can be uh, quite successful, however, is not as strong as posterior techniques and involves a higher instance of, of, of dysphagia. I would advocate a posterior uh, fixation with uh, screws across the fracture site and lateral mass screws at uh, C3 to stabilize the C2, C3 instability. Again, Jens, thank you so much for inviting me and I'm so excited about this uh, this morning. Thank you so much for your time and attention. This was masterful in content, and again, under 10 minutes, uh, anything you ever want to know about Hangman's Fractures and <laughs> pictures, so thank you. We'll show you a case uh, of a Hangman's Fracture later. One of our participants, by the way, we have over 100 live participants on the feed, and we have the uh, same number on Facebook Live, so uh, welcome to the audience from literally all over the world. Um, <clears throat> We'll show you a case later in the discussions that you submitted. Uh, it's a very compelling case. Rick, uh, one of our questioners asked, what is a benzyl type uh, um, variant of a hangman's fracture? Can you address that? A benzyl type. I'm not familiar with a benzyl type. I think it's a shear fracture. So um, it, you demonstrated the older type um, uh, classic things, which I still use, and I think all of us have been trained in the, the FND um, and Levine variant. Uh, AO has tried to simplify things down into ABC. Is that something that you find useful as you're training your residents and fellows? So I do think I do use the AO classification for subaxial uh, fractures, but because the Effendi classification, it's, it's sort of like the Anderson and D'Alonzo classification for odontoid fractures. It's been around for a long time. It's withstood the test of time. And the reason that it has with, withstood the test of time is because it's anatomically simple to, to categorize these and it, and it predicts outcome and it can drive our, our uh, uh, 
management uh, techniques, operative versus non-operative management. So that's why I like the Effendi classification. With the variants, like the atypical Eismont uh, fracture and the 2A fracture, which is a variant of uh, 2. So the other question by John France was, um, if the pedicle fracture is too close uh, to the posterior elements, uh, how does it make sense to try to still secure a transpedicular screw in there? Do you resort to your uh, translaminar screws that you're so masterful at? What do you do if you have this fracture just has shattered the pedicle and you can't get a, a screw across? Uh, I would still recommend trying to get a screw across. You can always get a screw across it and into the vertebral body of of c2 uh and then again i would marry that with a lateral mass screw of c3 uh jens i actually sent you a a case and i presented i think last year of a fracture just like that uh, john it's a atypical hangman's fracture with a severe spinal cord injury where uh it is a, rather difficult to get the screw across because the fracture is so far anterior um but uh, I believe that that provides much better stability than a laminar screw or other type of fixation. 